So today we have Reverend Maestro Reverend Brian Egan uh, and a whole bunch of letters after your name. <laughs> CHT, CRM, CKRM, which means something very important. Uh, he is an author, a certified hypnotherapist, a Reiki master, a Karuna Reiki master, a Maestro Shaman from the Shipibo lineage of Peru, a pranic energy worker, a crystal bowl sound healer, an EFT practitioner, a quantum touch practitioner, a Sedona method practitioner, a chakra cleansing teacher, a Qigong teacher, an ordained minister from the ASEAN New Life Church. He has his Bachelor of Science in Psychology with a minor in Special Education, and he is the Director of Sound Healing Conservatory. He's been practicing and teaching spirituality for over 21 years. He's done a lot of work with children, families, and individuals by leading workshops, classes, and through individual and group sessions. He's also designed and he runs a, chill, a kid's spiritual summer camp for 13 years. And this taught children, many quantum, many children, quantum physics and spiritual concepts, meditation and mindfulness practices. So please join me in welcoming Maestro Reverend Brian Egan, and we will move into our healing meditation. Thank you, Trish. <clears throat> Thank you guys for being here. Um, all the, the things. Um, <clears throat> raise your hand if you're a mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mother's Day, you know, although a Hallmark holiday is important because we don't give moms enough credit. And they deserve all the credit for the reason we're here. So take a minute and hold your mother in your heart. Take a deep breath with that connection to your mother. Breathe out slow. Take another slow, easy, deep breath and this time acknowledging the gratitude perhaps not always felt or understood, but that deep gratitude that you have for your mother for putting up with all of our stuff, right? You breathe out into that space. Mothers are the strongest people. Take another deep breath. Holding reverence for our mother, for our divine mother, Mother Earth. She holds us despite all the things we do to her. And breathe out into that space. Now I want you to hold in your heart and sound that deep connection to Mother Earth, that deep connection to your mother, that deep connection to your children if you have them to all the people that you share that, that ability to hold space for.
holding that vision of your mother in your heart now. Taking a deep breath in with gratitude, with understanding and compassion. Seeing them in the beauty that they are. Thanking them. For bringing me here. For holding you in life. To thank our mothers. Thank the Divine One. We allow this glow of understanding to come through. As we allow this as our now, it becomes, and so it is. And back to its presence. All the way up here. Turn the microphone on the podium back on. Okay. Let's hit the button. Okay. All right. I think we're ready. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Everybody's ready. Oh. All right. Thank you for being here, for joining me. Um, thanks for being. It does. It, it, the microphone likes me, apparently. Um, so we're buds. Um, it's okay. Um, so thank you and thank your mothers for bringing you here, um, whether you're here with them physically or you're here with them spiritually or, you know, you're going to see them later today or whenever you're going to see them. Um, we honor all parts of ourselves that we have been given from our mothers. Today, I wanted to talk about healing the mother wound. So the difficulties that we have, that we've had with our mothers. Because, you know, we come here, you know, not sure what we're getting into, you know, as we choose this path before we choose our parents, you know. So we come in and obviously we know, but, but we forget, you know. So we go through life and, you know, we, we're not always sure and we, we blame and we, we think that it's, it's because of something or it's because of something else. And we push that blame back into our parents thinking it's their fault, right? They brought us here, right? Even though we chose, they still brought us here, right? So there's a part of us that has to make amends with that in ourselves. Because it's not up to them to fix it. It's up to us to fix it. And all the feelings we have surrounding it in, in every direction, you know, not just as a um, a child, but as, as a parent, if you have children yourself, you know, um, and this goes for, for men as well. You know, I'm definitely not out of the, out of the, out of the loop in this, but, but for, for our mothers, you know, they're the ones that fully brought us here and held us in the most uplifting light that we could have. And despite whatever they've gone through in their lives before that, they were here to bring us here with love. We were created and held in love. And so everybody, really quick, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Think of your mother and think of all the beautiful things that she gave you to be here. And then breathe out slow. Now take another deep, full breath in. And now I want you to think of some of the difficult things that she handed you too. Not bad things, just difficult, right? Everything's either fun or a lesson, and it's up to us to decide which one they are. Just take a deep breath into that space, even deeper. Holding that reverence for our mothers and for their journey and all the things that they went through to bring us here. Breathe out into that space.
and just as we do for ourselves with that practice of Ho'oponopono. Take a deep, full breath in, picturing your mother just as they are, and tell them here in your mind, in your heart, I love you. And in that same space, holding them in your heart, tell them I'm sorry. Sorry that I've held pain, that I've held attachments, that I've held the fear, the worry, the doubt, the sadness of the way it should have been, or I expected it to be, or I hoped it would be. Just take a deep breath in, breathe in deeper, holding that space. And then breathe out slow. Again, acknowledging them just as they are. And take another deep, full breath in. Holding that light and that love for our mothers. And in that space, telling them, I forgive you. I forgive you for pain. I forgive you for fear. I forgive you for expectations. I forgive you for doubts, for worries, for sadness. I forgive you because I love you. I forgive you because I am you. And I've come directly from you. And take a deep breath into that space, honoring all parts with acceptance, love, and forgiveness. Holding that gratitude for them as you hold gratitude for everything. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in some more. This time we're going to make an ah sound together, but I want you to picture this ah sound circling your mother with love, with appreciation, with gratitude, with understanding. Breathe in deep. And hold it. And together with the sound, that ah sound. Ready? Uh... Just allowing that love to surround them, helping them to receive grace as we surround them with it just as we surround ourselves and everyone else. Holding that space and that grace for our mothers now, come back to presence. Open your eyes. So our moms do the best that they can they are impeccable warriors because they are here to protect their children, to protect their lives, to protect their sovereignty as beings. And it's our job as their children to hold that reverence back up to them because they do the best that they can. And that's what we're here for, to do the best that we can, to show up with love all the time. And the more that we can share that with them, the more that they can, can heal if they're not quite there. The more that they can make those connections, the more that they can find their wholeness. Just as we hold space for our own mothers, we must hold space for Mother Earth. She's going through some things, and it's our fault. As her children, we need to honor that too, um, and honor our responsibility to help. So if you would, take a deep breath for Mother Earth. Close your eyes. holding that connection across all parts of her. 
as we are her children. It is our job to hold that space for her, to care for her, to nurture her, as she has done for us. Breathe into that space. And now I want you to picture yourself breathing in from the top of your head, pulling in light now from the top of your head down through your body, pulling that light all the way down through your body, behind your eyes, down through your neck, your shoulders, your torso, down through your arms and legs, and grow some roots of light into the earth. So breathe in really deep. Pull those roots of light down into the earth, greeting our mother, our divine, sacred mother. And then breathe out and allow her energy to flow back up through us as we are her agents of healing. And hold that gratitude for her that we hold for our own mothers. And thank Mother Earth for being. Coming back into the space behind your eyes. Understanding not just our responsibility, but but the the reverence, you know, holding everything in Mother Earth sacred. With everything that we do, we are always in a space of creation and meditation in our mind. And the more that we can reframe our thoughts towards positive growth and expansion to heal, the more that all of the mothers can heal. And all of ourselves can heal. So the book I wanted to read a piece out of today. It's one I've looked at before. Um, it's The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. So our mothers are our first heroes. And so let's see where the book takes us. All right, we're at page 47. It's called Part One, The Adventure of the Hero. chapter is called Departure. The Call to Adventure. Long, long ago, when wishing still could lead to something, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful, but the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, who had seen so many things, simply marveled every time it shone on her face. Now close to the castle of this king, was a great dark forest. And in the forest, under an old lime tree, a spring. And when the day was very hot, the king's child would go out into the wood and sit on the edge of the cool spring. And to pass the time, she would take a golden ball, toss it up and catch it. And this was her favorite plaything. Now it so happened one day that the golden ball of the princess did not fall into the little hand lifted into the air, but passed it, bounced on the ground, and rolled directly into the water. The princess followed it with her eyes, but the ball disappeared. And the spring was deep, so deep, that the bottom could not be seen. Thereupon she began to cry, and her crying became louder and louder, and she was unable to find consolation. And while she was lamenting in this way, she heard someone call to her. What is the matter, princess? You are crying so hard, a stone would not be forced to pity you. She looked around to see where the voice had come from, and there she beheld a frog, holding its fat, ugly head out of the water. Oh, it's you, old water plopper, she said. I am crying over my golden ball, which has fallen into the spring. Be calm. Don't cry, answered the frog. I can surely be of assistance. But what will you give me if I fetch your toy for you? Whatever you would like to have, dear frog, she said. 
my clothes, my pearls and jewels, even the gold, even the golden crown that I wear? The frog replied, your clothes, your pearls and jewels, and your golden crown I do not want. But if you will care for me and let me be your companion and playmate, let me sit beside you at your little table, eat from your little golden plate, drink from your little cup, sleep in your little bed. If you promise me that, I will go straight down and fetch your golden ball. All right, she said, I promise you anything you want, if you bring, if you will only bring me back the ball. But she thought, how that simple frog chatters. There he sits in the water of his own kind, and could never be the companion of a human being. As soon as the frog had obtained her promise, he ducked his head and sank, and after a little while came swimming up again, he had the ball in his mouth, and tossed it on the grass. The princess was elated when she saw her pretty toy. She picked it up and scampered away. Wait, wait, called the frog. Take me along. I can't run like you. But what good did it do? Though he croaked after her as loudly as he could. She paid not the slightest heed, but hurried home, and soon had completely forgotten the poor frog, who must have hopped back again into his spring. This is an example of one of the ways in which the adventure can begin. A blunder, apparently the merest chance, reveals an unsuspected world, and the individual is drawn into a relationship with forces that are not rightly understood. As Freud has shown, blunders are not the merest chance. They are the result of suppressed desires and conflicts. They are ripples on the surface of life, produced by unsuspecting, unsuspected springs. And these may be very deep, as deep as the soul itself. The blunder may amount to the opening of a destiny. Thus it happens, in this fairy tale, that the disappearance of the ball is the first sign of something coming for the princess. The frog is the second, and the unconsidered promise is the third. As a preliminary manifestation of the powers that are breaking into play, the frog, coming up, as it were, by miracle, can be termed the herald. The crisis of his appearance is the call to adventure. The herald's summons may be to live, as in the present instance, or at a later moment of the biography to die. It may sound the call to some high historical undertaking, or it may mark the dawn of religious illumination. As apprehended by the mystic, it marks what has been termed the awakening of the self. In the case of the princess of the fairy tale, it signified no more than the coming of adolescence. But whether small or great, and no matter what the stage or grade of life, the call rings up the curtain, always, on a mystery of transfiguration. A rite, or monument, or spiritual passage, which, when complete, amounts to a dying and a birth. The familiar life horizon has been outgrown. The old concepts, ideals, and emotional patterns no longer fit. The time for the passing of a threshold is at hand. So how does that tie in, huh? It ties in perfectly, right? We make our promises to our children. And we make our promises to our parents. And we forget them as we grow older. And we forget that they are, they are our our essence, our beginning. And it's our job to make amends with that part, to undergo the adventure of reparenting, reconfiguring our relationship with our origins. And it's our job to embrace that challenge, to show compassion when we've only held strife. He makes the connection to adolescence. You know, think of our teenage years. Did we agree with our parents, whether our dad or our mom? Probably not so much, you know, or we tried to not, right? So those times often don't get healed. Sometimes they create complete breaks in relationships. Um, and it's, it's, it's both sides that need to make the amends. You know, our job as the children and our job as the parents and the more that we can recognize that, the, the faster we can heal all parts of ourselves and hold the wholeness.
for ourselves and our family and all the generational lines that we, we move through. So, yeah. Thank you to all the mothers here on the internet, everywhere. And thank you to our Divine Mother that holds the space for us so that we can be. Thank you.